Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This morning I'm looking at a book in the covering the law of real property and what you can do with your land. This particular book is called Restrictions on the Use of Land. Very emotive topic, a very popular one because obviously many people own property, that is real property, and they want to do things and they find they can't because all sorts of impediments are in their way, statutory uh, requirements for various things, planning and so forth, and of course things like easements. Now this book has been written by William Webster <coughs> and Robert Weatherly. It's come to us from Wildy Hill and Simmons Publishers. Um, Wildy's of course are the main booksellers in London at Lincoln's Inn. Um, what I would say is that this particular book is one of a number of books that Wildy's publish which are of great significance and help to practitioners. My wife Elizabeth and I looked at the book and gave a title for our book review the following. Original and welcome, an authoritative new reference work on what you can and can't do with land. Let's have a look at the book first of all. It's a hardback, blue cover. There we go, you can see the front. There's the spine, there's nothing on the back. Spine there, front cover. Uh, it runs to something approaching 560 odd pages. There's an index at the back, which you can see quite useful index uh, with page numbering. Then you've got the a structure, that's the start of the index there. The structure of the book is such, you do have footnoting of course at the bottom. You do have a nice lots of subheads. And you've got, um, again you can see footnoting there, you've got paragraph numbering if you can see on the sides. When you look at the book, it's the paragraph numbering is on the left-hand side. So you should be able to find things pretty quickly. There's the front cover. And then after that, you get into this some blurb about Wildy. Then, of course, there's a very useful forward. Um, and this book, as I say, I think is very useful. The forward's written by Lord Newberger, David Newberger, currently President of the Supreme Court, about to retire in the autumn of this year. I'm recording this review at the beginning of 2017. There's the preface from the two authors. Then you've got the content section. Quite a detailed content section with the various parts. Um, a total number of, um, let's just see how many we've got. We've got 51 chapters in total. So paragraph numbering for each chapter and six parts uh, ending up with planning law right at the back. Um, table of cases, large number of cases of course involved. Uh, it's a very well put together book, this one, Ta Table of Statutes. Then you've got, after that, the Statutory Instruments, which are obviously fundamental in this area again. Then Practice Directions, very useful for us with the White Book and so forth, linking into the uh, where we do things. Then EC, as it's called, and International Materials. Then a very useful list of abbreviations. One of the problems with land law that frightens a lot of people is the <coughs> huge number of abbreviations. Then you see we start off straight away with part one, which looks at easements and profits of Prandra. And of course we then run through with all the various encumbrances on the land and, and the things you can and can't do. Town and village greens are covered, public rights of way, that's basically. Then you've got restrictive covenants in part four, that's the freehold land. <clears throat> uh, you've got assets of uh, community value, elements of planning law. So there it is. It's a very good book. I think it's got an, a an applicability for the general readership as well. Whilst it's clearly a law book, I think it's very helpful for ordinary people who don't have a, a, a grounding in law, um, ordinary uh, un unqualified people who will understand some of the terminology to, to know what they're... Uh, what they can and can't do, their rights and their liabilities. The The problem with this area is it is technical and people do make assumptions about what they can and can't do with their property quite often erroneously and that's why we have quite a lot of litigation. What do we say about the book? Well we say this, when and where can you use a right of way <clears throat> and can you take your dog and how is a right of way defined? And what exactly is the definition of a neighbourhood? All of these things are contained here. The answer to these and thousands of similar queries on restrictions on the use of land can be found in this new uh, book uh, published uh, by Wildy Simmons and Hill uh, with a forward by the President of the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom, 
uh, David Newberger, Lord Newberger. Now, this book, I think, is relevant to councillors and politicians as well, because an awful lot of their post bag can resolve around neighbour disputes, if I can put it in the more general um, terminology. Now, Newberger commends the book as original and welcome, hence our title, particularly in view of the recent changes in law relating to private rights and public control over land, as well as increasing concern over resulting environmental issues. Now, the authors are William Webster and Robert Weatherly, and they produced a timely and authoritative work of reference intended to, quote, fill a gap in the book market dominated by some heavy, well-known texts. Well, I can say they are heavy, they are well-known, but they're not very readable. And this book actually is very readable. And I think we're very lucky that it's been put across, that the subject matter is put across in such an easy way. And of course, with their aim in mind, they've included six separate sections dealing with such matters, as I've said, easements to start off with, village greens, you, which need not necessarily be green, of course, <coughs> restrictive covenants, and yes, public rights of way, and of course, lots, a lot more. Also included in uh, Newberger's words is extensive commentary on the very recent notion of assets of community value introduced by the Location Act 2011. There's also a section on elements of planning law and all this in one convenient volume. Um, there's a lot of information actually in the one volume. It's comprehensive, clearly written and very up to date. And apropos planning, it will be of particular interest, say the authors, to see what emerges from the UK's decision to leave the EU in the context of the right of EU-based planning environmental legislation. Well, we've now made the decision to leave. The answer, therefore, will be that it will remain for the time being, but we'll have to see whether we want to keep that particular part of the law or not. The issue at the moment is whether we have a blanket approval for legislation and then over the next decade or so we we start changing the laws to the sort of systems that we want. That's really how the, the basic common law system and, and the statutory system will, will run, I would have thought. And as we're reminded, of course, in the book, the, the law in this area changes on virtually a daily basis. And here is therefore an immediate and authoritative uh, set of pieces of advice for practitioners charged with advising clients, not only on their rights, but on positive... Um, sort of possible uh, pitfalls ahead so that you can be positive about what you can and can't do. Practitioners, we thought, especially busy ones, will appreciate the more than 90 pages of cases which you've got at the front. Obviously that includes statutes, statutory instruments and the PDs, plus of course the table of the EC and international material. And obviously we are a member of the EU at the moment and will remain so for a while, so it's particularly relevant at this stage. The authors um, come from three paper buildings at Temple and they've endeavoured to ensure that the, they've dealt with the law as it is in force on the 1st of July 2016, although later developments have been added at proof stage. And I'm recording this at the beginning of 2017. As I've said, I think it's a very worthwhile book. I'd like to thank everybody involved for it. Let's just have a quick look at it again. There's the front and the side, there's nothing on the back. Um, just opening it in the middle. Interference with public highways. You can see trespass, public nuisance. Everything is there. You've got, uh, as I say, a lot of footnoting to justify all the points and give you the detail you're looking for. It's, a, it's altogether a very good book. And as I've said, and will repeat, I think it's a book that a lot of people could read and they would they will understand most of what is being said. They obviously require uh, probably very um, experienced professional advice uh, if they are to litigate for any reason, although never litigate if you can avoid it is the general message. But the, the point about this is it's trying to identify how far you can go with your own property. I think they've succeeded very well with their title. Thank you to all. Bye bye.